is Charlene from the Crafty Art Shack and today we're going to be working on a special project with these. What are we going to do with these? Well, let's get to the craft desk and get and see. But first we're going to talk about what these are and where to get them at a good price. So let's get to the craft desk and get started. Let's go. All right, you guys, these are Venetian blinds for anybody who doesn't know it. And the difference in these is the slats are about two inches thick. And these are actually made out of a plastic material. And in our next couple of videos, we're going to show you how to use these for signs and different things around the house, along with that topping, that topper that's on the top of it. Now, if you can now, if you can find these dark wood color ones, get them because they are rare. They also have them in a light tan. Now, where I find mine at is over the years, I have gone to what we call the Restore. In our city, that's called Habitat for Jack's Restore. And there they have stuff that comes out of homes that are being remodeled or different things. And... You can get these blinds there now for, or when I got mine, they were around $3.99 a pair. And this is about the size that they were. But these make great projects for doing crafts. And I've used them in a ton of crafts over the years, doing different things with them. So I'm going to share with you some of the things that we've made out of them in the next couple of videos. So let's get to the craft desk and see what we're going to make out of ours that we have today. All right, you guys, we're here at the craft desk. And what I have is I have um, eight blinds. Six of them are 18 inches, which is the size that this set of blinds came. And you guys, there was about 30 slats on this these blinds. So I got to make quite a few projects out of these. So what I'm doing here is I am taking my spackling that I just showed you and we are going to take and fill in all these little holes. Now the reason why my slats are staying together is because I took some painters tape and on the opposite side of it I taped uh, each one of these slats together on the ends and you'll see that in just a second when I turn it over but I'm continuing to fill these holes in these slats and then I will take at this point I'll take a uh, baby wipe and wipe off all of this excess so that it doesn't dry on there and causes problems and see where I have it taped right there that's why mine are staying together and if you tape these together it makes your project go a lot easier in doing this and then I'm going to make sure I wipe these blinds down all the way and then I'll you'll see me I'll separate those slats get that uh, spackling out from in between the slats if it gets in there and clean it up really good so that I don't have any debris any dirt any dust or anything on these when I get ready to start working with them now as I finish up wiping this up, I got another two more blinds and I cut them down to 12 inches. So these are two by 12 inch pieces. So this is one of my, there's, you can see I have the tape on there. That's a better picture of it about where I lay it down at. Mm -hmm. Now what I do here is I take my two slats and I'm going to put them on here and I'm going to see where I need to cut them off at. And I'm going to cut it just a little bit short for from where I marked it because you don't want this hanging over the edge of your sign. You want it to come right to the very edge. And so I get out my miter shears and these these things cut so easy you don't even need miter shears. You could do this with a, a razor knife or utility knife of some sort. But this, I, I cut mine with miter shears just because I have them. But if you don't have them, it's okay. You can cut it with a razor knife. And this is how easy 
they cut. I just line it up right on the line and just snip it right off. You guys, if you don't have painter sticks or you don't have any other wood and you've got an old pair of these that are hanging around, a lot of times these blinds have something wrong with them and sometimes they don't and I use them in my house. But if I get a pair and they have something wrong with them, I don't discard them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put lots of hot glue down on each part that's going to touch one of my slats and glue it down really, really good. And you're going to want to make sure you fill in that little hole on this sign, this, this piece that you're putting on to. And I always fill mine in after I get them on there because then it doesn't come out the backside. And so I'll glue one on one end and I'll glue one on the other end. And I'm using my little holes that were there from where the blinds connected together as my line to line these up. And you guys, this just turned, this project turned out so cute. Okay, now that I've got all my little slats glued together, this is what my sign looks like. And those little holes will, uh, go away and you can actually touch them up with some white paint if you want to and what I'm doing is I'm laying out this is one of those window clings you get from Walmart for 98 cents and I'm laying them out on here I kind of cut them close because you can see the color of this is a different color from my sign so I could have painted my sign to match it even more but I didn't but I'm laying out all my pieces to see where I want them to go and then I'm going to put Mod Podge on the back of my pieces and stick them down and you see me adjusting this putting them where I want them to be because to see what looks best and I don't necessarily use all the pieces but I use the majority of the pieces from that window clean. And then I got my Mod Podge out and I just started putting them down. You got to peel the backing off of them. Okay, I've already put all my pieces down or no, I'm putting them down now uh, with the Mod Podge. I'm putting it on the back of them. And then once I get that done and I use, uh, it's best if you use a matte Mod Podge, but at the time I used the dishwasher safe one and it came out with a real shiny sheen on the top of it. Um, not that I need to put this in the dishwasher, but it's what I had out. But if I was to do it again, I would use the matte um, Mod Podge to make sure that it doesn't, didn't have such a shine on it the next time. And then once I got them all down, then I went back and put Mod Podge over the top of it. Now you guys, now you guys, you notice right here along this slat, on both sides of it and the one down that has the Christmas on it, I glued jute rope, hot glue jute rope along the edges of those slats because I wanted to make it look and appear more rustic. Okay, you guys, now that this is dried, I'm going to turn my sign over and I'm going to take uh, 24 inches of this nautical rope and I'm going to glue it to the back side of my sign. I'm trying to decide where to glue it at Then I'm going to measure it out and then I'm going to cut it and get it ready to glue down. Okay, and what I'm showing you here is I'm going to use the 
little holes that were in the blinds as my measurement to how far down I'm going to glue this onto the sign. And I'm going to just put some glue down and get my little finger out and make sure that I don't get burnt with this glue. I'm going to glue it in two places, one down there, and then I'm going to add a little bit more glue to the rest of the top of the sign. And I'm going to glue it down and I'll do this for both sides of the sign. Then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get out some ribbon and I'm going to just make a simple bow just like you would if you were tying your shoes or something like that. But I make two loops and then I just flip one loop inside of the thing and then I just pull it back down and keep fluffing it out until I get my bow all fluffed up. This is just a real simple bow, you guys. It's just like tying your shoestrings. And I'm trying to decide where I'm going to put this bow on here. I end up putting it at the top and I end up adding a little piece of jute rope with it too. And there we go. And our sign is all finished. Isn't that just too cute? Okay, what we're doing now is we're going to make us a set of Christmas books for a display that we're working on and I thought I would share this project with you. I took a piece of scrapbook paper, cut it down to four inches and that's four by 12 inches. I'm taking double-sided tape and putting it down on the back side of this so that I could just stick it straight to my book. You'll notice I already have one book done there. Now I only put the scrapbook paper on that first book that I did because I wanted to leave that little design that was on the front of the book and it was already red. So I thought it worked just worked out just right for us. So this is the uh, second little book that I'm doing. It's going to be my top book and I'm just removing the double sided tape from these pieces. And sometimes that doesn't want to come up really well. So I use a exacto knife to help get it up. Now I'm placing that in the center and I'll flip it over and get it stuck down on one side. And that's the advantage of using that double sided tape is that you can do this really easy. And then I just right there where my spine starts for my book, I'm going to cut two little slits and fold that edge up and then go to the back of the book and fold this edge up. And this makes this go really fast when you're using and I cut that piece off and then I'll flip it around and do the other end. When you're using the double sided tape and the paper like this, it goes really fast. And I will do this on all, I'm going to use three books in my set and I'll do it to all three books. The next thing I did is I took a matching piece of uh, that stuff, the vinyl. And I'm just marking out where I have about an inch all the way around it. And I'm going to cut that off. Now for this, you can use the Dollar Tree uh, vinyl. It works just great. I just happened to have this on hand and decided I was going to use it because these are pieces that's been in my stack that I haven't used in the past year. So I needed to use them up anyway. And so I'm making sure that I cut two pieces for my book. And you'll want to make sure they're at least an inch wider than the edge of your book. And then I just take and peel back the edge of it. Yeah, you see I'm having a hard time getting that up off of it. And I'll peel back where I have about an inch left over or an inch on the side and fold that. And then I'll stick it on my book. And wherever I stick it, I'm going to make sure I stick it in the same place on the other side of my book. And I'm showing you that I have an inch left over and then I'm going to pull that off. Now, if you do it right, you don't have any bubbles. And then what you're going to do is you're going to cut corners out and get rid of that. And then you're going to take and fold one edge in. And then you're going to do the same on the other side. And I'm kind of cutting those at an angle so that 
I don't have any bulk build up on those corners. And I'll fold the bottom in, and then I will fold that outside edge in, and voila, we have our book covered on one side. Now, mine did have bubbles in it, and I went out, went back in there with my spatula and worked out my bubbles, and any of them that didn't work out, I just took a pin and popped them and worked them out that way. When you do the second side of this book, you'll need to figure out where you put your back side on and make sure you put the front side on at the same place because if you don't, it's going to look funny. So, and then I re just repeat the steps I did on the other one by cutting out the edges. Okay, and there you go. You have your book done. There's my first one. I'm showing you I didn't change it because I like the cover of it. And there we go. Okay, now we have all three of our books finished and you guys, you then you'll want to stack them. If I'd have thought about it, I wouldn't have put the two red ones side by side. I would have picked a different color, but I didn't think about that when I was doing it. So now I'm going to get out some ribbon and I found this cute uh, candy cane looking ribbon at the Dollar Tree and I just knew I wanted to use it for a project this year. And I was thinking about layering another ribbon with it, but I didn't have enough, so I just decided to just go with this. So I'm going to turn over my books, and this is how I'm going to measure out how much I need. It's just by wrapping it around there loosely to see. And you guys, that is a sticker on the back of the book. I don't care if it's there because that book is going to be facing downward and nobody's going to see it. So I'm lining up all my books where I think I want them to be. And you could glue your books together, but I didn't glue my books together because I wanted to use them for something else after Christmas. And this is just a temporary uh, thing that I am making, even though I put vinyl on them, because um, I tried using tape, but that didn't work. And so I'm going to go ahead and put glue down. I know I'm going to be able to take this glue up. I use these books for other types of projects. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that I can take them apart. So I didn't want to put too much glue on them. And have them stick together or have to fight with the glue to get them apart later on in the year. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cute little bow for the top of my book. And I kind of fold it so I can guess where I want to do it. Now, I'm going to show you. You just crisscross those pieces. Take a stapler and staple it. And then you're going to take and bunch that up. And you can either use that ribbon or I used a solid color ribbon. And I'm going to put it right there in the middle of that. And I'm going to hot glue it down. And that's going to be, I'm looking to see if that's what I want. Yep, it is. So I glue it down. Um, make sure I get my little finger out because my little fingers got blisters on them from doing so much hot gluing. Okay, and then I'm going to just trim that off. And I'm going to stick it down. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get out some of my bits and bops. Actually, I don't get out my bits and bops. I get out my stamps. I've got one that says Merry Christmas. And what I'm going to do is line it up on my book right there in the center and stamp it. And then I'm showing you the Merry Christmas. Now, if I was to do this again, I'm going to use that Peace on Earth on the next book. And the car book with the little cars on it, I'm not going to use anything. Now, you could use any kind of stamps or paint on this or whatever you wanted to do. But I was just trying to do a quick, a quick project that with these books that I could set with my display that I was making. And so I was trying to hurry up. Now, the next thing I should be doing is getting out my bits and bobs. And I'm gonna add a little sprig of greenery and a little sprig of beads to this.
We're back from the craft desk and here is our awesome projects that we did today. Aren't these just too cute? Here, let me get these books up here so you can see the Merry Christmas and the Peace on Earth stamps. If you have stamps, use the stamps. If you don't, just write your own letters on there or do your own thing. Make this yours. We did these today because we wanted a set of them for our display. And so we thought we'd share it with you when we were doing it. And this is what the top and the sides look like. If I did it again, I wouldn't use the Merry Christmas stamp because it's not very... The letters aren't thick and it doesn't show up from a distance. But I think it's still cute. You guys... I just think that this sign and these little books turned out really cute and we're going to start focusing on now we've been doing Christmas crafts for decorating your house. Now we're going to in any one of these that we've done would be good for giving away as Christmas gifts, but we're going to start focusing more on Christmas gifts in the next few weeks starting with Thanksgiving Day. So join us for those episodes here at the Crafty Art Shack. And that'll do it for today here on the Crafty Art Shack. We love you guys and we hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and we'll see you later. Bye! Bye. And I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Hi, y'all. It's Charlene from the Crafty Art Shack, and the fan is going over to I messed up. I think about the things that, I, you guys, you just can't make up some of this stuff. It's so funny. <laughs> I messed it up. I was supposed to be doing the end. <laughs> and that sounds stupid. <laughs> yeah, stop the recording, Charlene. That'll do it for this episode of the Cocky Eye Shack. We'll see you later. Bye.